Nepal, a realm where the very fabric of existence is woven with unparalleled vistas and where the spirit of adventure awakens amidst the rugged grandeur of the Himalayas. The Three Passes trek in Nepal promises an odyssey through a tapestry of majestic peaks, serene valleys and vibrant cultures, offering a transcendent fusion of nature's splendor and human resilience. Unveiling a world of ethereal beauty, this iconic trek beckons intrepid souls to traverse rugged terrain, witness nature's grandeur, and weave unparalleled tales of exploration through the pristine expanse of the Everest region. Hello, I'm Nicholas Eager, an avid independent hiker, storyteller, and seasoned trekker who has personally ventured across the enthralling landscapes of the Three Passes Trek in Nepal. This hiking guide offers a comprehensive yet concise overview of the essential aspects of the trek, providing invaluable insights into the route, my personal highlights, gear requirements, and costs. Delve into detailed information for each day of the hike, and vital considerations such as transportation, permits, and hiring local guides or porters. Whether you're an experienced trekker seeking comprehensive insights or a novice adventurer venturing into the Himalayas, this guide is designed to enrich your journey and set the stage for an unforgettable Himalayan odyssey. Now, if you're new to this channel, I craft expert hiking guides like these that help you go on your own adventures. So if you like this kind of content, then maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Here's an overview of the journey ahead. Along this challenging and rewarding adventure in the Everest region, you'll encounter three high mountain passes, Renjo La, Cho La, and Kongma La, each offering breathtaking views of the Himalayas. You'll witness the incredible Gokyo Lake with its crystal clear waters and friendly yaks. And of course, you'll visit the base camps of iconic peaks like Everest. Amadablam, and Cha Oyu, giving you a glimpse into how climbers prepare for their expeditions. You'll also have the opportunity to summit smaller peaks like Sunda Ri, Gokyo Ri, and Chu Kung Ri, offering challenging side trips with solitary views. Throughout this video, I'll cover a couple different itinerary options to make this journey your own. Before we begin, there are a few essential things you need to know. With evolving regulations regarding trekking in Nepal, it's crucial to be aware of current rules for hiring a guide, which may include mandatory requirements. Engaging a local guide can enhance the experience, facilitating navigation and offering insights into the region's culture. Personally, I prefer to start my journey alone and meet local guides along the way if I would like to know more about the area. Securing the appropriate permits, including the Sagamatha National Park Permit, Kumbu Pasang Rural Municipality Permit, and Tim's Card, is easily possible along the trail after Lukla, so there's no need to do so in Kathmandu. For proper navigation, you should always carry a paper map and compass and know how to use them in an emergency. You can pick up any number of paper maps in Tamil, Kathmandu, when you arrive. Additionally, I typically use a GPS app on my phone, like Maps.me or All Trails. You can find a link to my entire GPS route in the description of the video. As you wander through these mesmerizing landscapes, rest assured that tea houses with their humble charm await to welcome you. The locals are warm, welcoming, and genuine, making the trek a culturally enriching experience. Tea houses provide hot meals, basic facilities, and additional amenities like hot showers and electricity, though they might be limited. Embrace the simplicity and enjoy the camaraderie with fellow trekkers and locals. Having visited Nepal across various seasons, I've realized that there isn't one best time to visit as each season has its advantages and drawbacks. Spring, from March to May, 
boasts blooming wildflowers and slightly fewer crowds, making it an appealing time to trek. Autumn, spanning September to November, offers fantastic weather but draws significant crowds, thus necessitating early planning. Personally, I find the shoulder seasons, such as late spring or early winter, appealing due to favorable weather and fewer crowds. Hiking in the Himalayas is difficult. Your safety and well-being are of utmost importance. Take time to acclimatize and relish rest days amid the tranquil beauty of the Himalayas. Make sure to do your own research and due diligence. In the end, your safety is your responsibility. Now, let's explore the different itinerary options for the Three Passes trek. You have two major decisions to make, where to start and which way to go. Lukla is the typical starting point of many treks in the Kumbu region. However, you have a couple of options to reach here. You can either take a jeep to a village lower in the Solokumbu Valley and walk to Lukla, or you can fly directly to Lukla from Kathmandu. Flying is faster and more convenient, but flights are weather dependent, can be subject to delays and cancellations, and are more expensive. If you have a few extra days and wish for a more authentic experience, consider starting your trek from lower in the Solukumbu Valley. This path allows you to explore lesser visited villages, witness the majestic summit of Paiki Peak, and save some money by avoiding the flight to Lukla. I chose this option to immerse myself in the local culture and discover hidden gems. I'll cover this adventure in more detail in a future video. Next, you'll have to decide whether to go clockwise or counterclockwise on your journey. After reaching Namchi Bazaar, the path splits. Going clockwise will offer you quieter trails and tea houses, and if Everest Base Camp is your main destination, you'll save it for last, building up the excitement. Additionally, the views of Everest, Amadablam, and Gokyo Lake as you descend from the passes are truly awe-inspiring. On the other hand, going counterclockwise provides a gentler elevation gain and a slightly more defined acclimatization schedule. Personally, I opted to go clockwise for fewer crowds and better vistas, and I was not disappointed. No matter where you choose to start or which direction you go, get ready for an adventure that will leave you in awe. Now, let's walk through an example itinerary of my extended three passes trek. Day one, arriving in Kathmandu. As you step off the plane in Kathmandu, a bustling, vibrant city awaits. The air buzzes with the sounds of temple bells, honking horns and bustling markets. Colorful prayer flags flutter overhead, while ancient temples and stupas dot the cityscape. The aroma of incense mingles with spicy street food. Crowds of people, both locals and travelers, weave through narrow alleys lined with shops, selling everything from traditional handicrafts to trekking gear. Take time to absorb the sights, sounds, and energy of this extraordinary city before embarking on your adventure of a lifetime. Day two, getting from Kathmandu to Lukla. Depending on how you came to Lukla, you might have had an epic but brief 25-minute flight from Kathmandu or spent a few off the beaten path days walking in from the valley. Either way, you're in the right place to begin the next part of your journey. Day three, hiking from Lukla to Namchi Bazaar. Leaving Lukla, the path to Namchi Bazaar offers the option to pass through or briefly stop in the tranquil villages on the west side of the Dudkoshi River, providing a glimpse into the serene, lesser visited areas. Upon reaching Namchi Bazaar, the temptation to rest and acclimatize might beckon. However, you have the option to postpone this well-deserved respite to the end of the journey, allowing for a more enjoyable and appreciative experience of its comforts. 
Day 4. Hiking from Namchi Bazaar to Tame. Embarking from the vibrant heart of Namchi Bazaar, the route to Tame presents an enriching opportunity to take a brief detour to the serene Lawudo Monastery. This steep detour can infuse your journey with spirituality and serenity, offering a chance to experience the peaceful ambience and cultural significance of the monastery before continuing on the trail to Tame. Day 5. Taking a rest day in Tame. Nestled amidst majestic mountains, Tame offers a captivating setting for a well-deserved rest day. Consider an acclimatization hike to Sunda Peak, which not only aids in adjusting to the altitude, but also rewards with breathtaking vistas. Delve into the tranquil ambience of Ta Mei Monastery and meander through the village, observing the graceful yaks and horses that are integral to the local way of life. This rest day provides an opportunity for both physical renewal and cultural immersion. Day 6. Hiking from Tamei to London Leaving the picturesque village of Tamei, the trail ascends gently, leading to the quaint settlement of Lungden. As you traverse this route, be sure to watch for a striking, massive white stupa shortly after departing from Tamei. Arriving in Lungden, allow yourself the opportunity to rest and recharge in this serene locale as the following day promises to be a demanding journey. Day 7. Hiking from Lungden to Gokyo Lake over Renjo Pass. Embarking from Lungden, the journey to Gokyo Lake unfolds as a lengthy yet immensely rewarding day. The trail leads to some of the most cherished vistas of the entire hike, particularly as you descend towards Gokyo Lake over Renjo Pass. Behold awe-inspiring panoramas of Everest that are truly difficult to surpass, making this leg of the journey a defining highlight of the entire trek. Day 8. Taking a rest day at Gokyo Lake. Nestled amidst the grandeur of the Himalayas, Gokyo Lake stands as a tranquil gem, offering a captivating setting for a rest day. Consider an acclimatization hike to Gokyo Ri or even the Cho Oyu base camp, indulging in more awe inspiring vistas that will leave an indelible mark on your memory. Wander leisurely around the mesmerizing blue waters, allowing the serene ambience of this place to rejuvenate your spirit before continuing the journey. Day 9 Hiking from Gokyo Lake to Dragnag. Departing from the serene Gokyo Lake, the trail leads to Dragnag, traversing a constantly changing glacial path. This relatively short journey is marked by the unique terrain, as the trail can be somewhat unstable due to glacial till. Exercise caution and maintain awareness as you navigate this terrain and appreciate the dynamic and captivating nature of the glacial landscape that accompanies your path to Dragnag. Day 10, hiking from Dragnag to Zongla over Chor Pass. Embarking from Dragnag, the journey to Zongla unfolds as another long and demanding day of trekking. While traversing this challenging route, be sure to keep a keen eye out for the stunning peak of Amadablam as you descend. The breathtaking presence of this iconic peak serves as a captivating highlight amid the rigors of this arduous yet rewarding leg of the Three Passes Trek. Day 11, hiking from Zongla to Lobuche. This section of trail is one of my personal favorites, offering unparalleled views of Amadablam. Once in Lobuche, consider continuing a bit further along the path to the Italian Pyramid Research Center. This center offers more comfortable beds, ensuring a well-deserved rest for the demanding journey ahead. Additionally, you'll have the surrounding views almost entirely to yourself, 
providing a serene and exclusive experience amidst the grandeur of the Himalayas. Day 12. Hiking from Lobuche to Gorakshep, Kalapatha, and Everest Base Camp. Embarking from Lobuche, the trail leads to a momentous day encompassing a summit of Kalapatha and a visit to Everest Base Camp. While it's feasible to undertake these experiences in a single day, it is an arduous endeavor. I recommend prioritizing a morning summit of Kala Patha to behold remarkable views of Mount Everest, followed by a visit to Everest Base Camp. Depending on your stamina, you could simply return to Gorik Shep or consider pushing further to Lobuche. Opting for a peaceful and cozy night's rest in Lobuche over the potentially crowded and uncomfortable conditions in the tea houses of Gorek Shep can contribute to a more rejuvenating experience, bolstering your physical and mental preparedness for the journey ahead. Day 13. Hiking from Gorek Shep to Lobuche. If you stayed the night in Gorek Shep, consider a short trek to Lobuche in preparation for crossing Kongma Pass. Day 14. Hiking from Lobuche to Chukung over Kongma Pass. Leaving Lobuche, the trail to Chukung involves crossing a glacial path before ascending steeply. The trail markers along the glacial portion, while helping navigation during my journey, may vary due to annual changes. Upon reaching Kongma Pass, be prepared to be enveloped by otherworldly views that will surely leave a lasting impression, serving as a testament to the breathtaking grandeur of the Himalayas. Day 15. Taking a rest day at Chukung. Nestled in the tranquil haven of Chukung, take a well-deserved day of rest following the arduous crossing of the last of the three passes. Alternatively, consider invigorating yourself with a day hike to summit Chukung Ri, providing an opportunity for rejuvenation amid breathtaking vistas. Keep a watchful eye on the awe-inspiring views of Amadablam, offering a close-up encounter with one of the Himalayas' most iconic peaks, adding to the allure of this restful day. Days 16 to 19, hiking from Chukung to Namche Bazaar. Returning towards Namche Bazaar, the path to Pangboche presents an opportunity to visit Amadablam Base Camp, while the journey to Port Se offers another opportunity to veer towards a less frequented village. Personally, I was more than ready to return to the respite that awaits in Namche Bazaar and hike this entire leg in one day. However, if you have the time and stamina, I recommend taking your time and exploring to your heart's content. Day 20. Taking a rest day or two at Namchi Bazaar. Revel in the leisurely rhythm of a rest day in Namchi Bazaar, savoring the comforts and vibrancy of this captivating town. Consider indulging in the luxurious amenities of Kumbu Lodge, renowned for its revitalizing showers and snug beds adorned with electric blankets. Opt for a remarkable day hike to the Sir Edmund Hillary viewpoint and Kunda, treating yourself to breathtaking panoramas accompanied by the graceful presence of yaks and Himalayan tar, enhancing the splendor of the surrounding landscape. Day 21. Hiking from Namchi Bazaar to Lukla. Retracing your steps from Namchi Bazaar to Lukla Immerse yourself in the familiar yet captivating surroundings as you bid farewell to the Himalayan landscapes. Make sure to catch the planes landing and taking off, a fascinating sight that begins around 7 in the morning. These aerial voyages carry fellow adventurers, their recollections akin to your own, creating a tapestry of shared experiences among the skyward bound. Day 22 hiking or flying from Lukla to Kathmandu. Upon reaching Lukla, you have the option to hike down to a lower valley village such as Tam Dada, Karikola or Saleri, and then take a jeep 
back to Kathmandu. However, for a more comfortable journey, I'd personally recommend to opt for a flight back. Although local jeeps may offer the potential to explore more lesser visited villages, a flight ensures a smoother and more relaxing conclusion to your extraordinary adventure, allowing you to reflect on the lifetime of experiences garnered in the Himalayas. Along the Three Passes trek, I encountered a myriad of highlights that made this hike an unforgettable experience. Let me share with you four of the most remarkable moments that have left an indelible mark on my memory. The moment I reached the summit of Renjo Pass, it felt as if the whole world lay at my feet. The majestic Mount Everest, standing proud and resolute, captured my gaze, and for a fleeting second, time stood still. The sight of the turquoise Gokyo Lake, cradled in the valley below, painted a mesmerizing picture against the backdrop of the surrounding peaks. The descent from Renjo Pass unveiled a panorama that felt like a living, breathing tapestry of nature's majesty, showcasing the raw power and serenity of the Himalayas. This, without a doubt, was a moment that called for silence and reverence. The time I spent in Tame village felt like a glimpse into a bygone era where simplicity and rugged beauty reign supreme. Stone-walled houses stood proudly against the backdrop of the Himalayan peaks, a testament to the resilience of the villagers who call this place home. The presence of yaks and horses added a touch of authenticity to this picturesque village, infusing the air with a sense of timelessness. Summiting Sundar Peak afforded me the luxury of solitude, allowing the vast expanse of the Himalayas to be my sole companion. In those moments, as I soaked in the untarnished views, it felt as though time slowed down, granting me a rare and privileged communion with nature's untamed splendor. Nestled beside the cerulean waters of Gokyo Lake, my rest day unfurled with an air of tranquility that enveloped the very essence of my being. The azure expanse of the lake mirrored the crisp, clear sky, inviting me to linger in a state of profound relaxation. The gentle presence of yaks and the unhurried rhythm of their movements only heightened the ambience, infusing the surroundings with an aura of serenity. The allure of the area was not limited to leisurely repose alone. Enticing day hikes to destinations such as Cha Oyu Base Camp and Gokyo Ri beckoned, promising further adventure amidst this hallowed land of untamed beauty. The path from Zongla to Lobuche wove a tapestry of anticipation and awe as the iconic peak of Amada Blam stood as a silent sentinel, commanding reverence. The vista of this majestic mountain, with its unmistakable ridges and formidable presence, imbued the journey with a sense of reverence and humility, casting its spell upon my heart. Gazing upon Amadablam, a sense of harmonious anticipation welled within me, as though the mountain itself was bestowing its blessing upon the path that lay ahead. This day, shrouded in the mystique of the Himalayas, seemed to hum with the promise of untold adventures and discoveries. Now, let's talk about how much things cost. Embarking on the Three Passes trek can be a budget-friendly adventure, allowing you to immerse yourself in the majestic beauty of the Himalayas without breaking the bank. Let's take a closer look at the budget outline to help you plan your unforgettable journey. If you choose to hire a guide, expect to pay approximately $30 to $40 per day, along with a tip to show your appreciation for their invaluable assistance. Hiring a porter to carry your belongings can cost from $20 to $25 per day, plus a tip to acknowledge their hard work and dedication. A jeep ride from Kathmandu to a village close to Lukla will cost you around $20, 
while a one-way flight between Lukla and Kathmandu will be around $150. Required permits cost approximately $45. The daily average for food is between $8 to $23 per day for one person, depending on your location and preferences. A double room can range from no charge to $8, again depending on the location and the amenities provided. A good rule of thumb is that the higher you go up, the more expensive costs become. Total daily cost can range from $10 down in the valley to $25 closer to Gokyo or EBC. For my entire trek, which included permits, Jeep transportation, food, and even luxurious hotels and dinners in Namchi Bazaar, I spent just under $500. Of course, this largely depends on when you go, how long you go, how many people you hire for support, and your individual preferences. If you hike independently or hire a local guide, you can manage these costs yourself. However, if you value convenience and professionalism, you can book an all-inclusive trip through a trekking company. Now, let's talk about what you should bring. For the three passes trek in Nepal, essential gear includes sturdy and waterproof trekking boots, trekking poles, a four-season sleeping bag, high-quality layered clothing suitable for varying temperatures, a down jacket, a reliable backpack, a first aid kit, a headlamp, UV protective sunglasses, a wide-brimmed hat, and a water purification system. Additionally, a warm hat, gloves, and sunscreen are necessary for protection against the elements. A good quality tent can provide flexibility for camping along the route, but it is not necessary if you wish to spend all of your nights in warm tea houses. These essentials enhance readiness for your own three passes trek. However, the list is not all-encompassing. Check the link in the description for the full list of gear I typically bring with me for hikes like these. As the sun sets on this journey, may the memories of the three passes trek in Nepal remain etched in your heart. From the enchanting vistas atop Renjo Pass to the vibrant culture of Namchi Bazaar, this odyssey has unraveled a tapestry of experiences and emotions. As you bid farewell to the towering Himalayas and the warm hospitality of the tea house owners, carry with you the triumphs and serenity of this adventure. Let the echoes of your footsteps in the Everest region serve as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the timeless allure of nature's grandeur. Until we meet again on the trail, keep the spirit of exploration alive.